It's favorites time. Okay, this is gonna be the noisiest favorites ever. Again, sorry, I literally keep mentioning this. I don't have any furniture in, in like little beauty space filming room situation. And so I had nowhere to put this in front of me besides a bag, like an actual grocery bag. Um, however, it's one of the nice reusable plastic bags. So it is quite sturdy. I did have enough faith that it would hold my makeup favorites for the entire month. Um, again, remember uh, monthly favorites for me, I call them grateful because I'm grateful for these things. I'm not going to mention a lifestyle anything. I'm going to do a separate video for that because we have a lot of makeup to talk about. It's been around six to seven weeks of playing with certain things and not really documenting properly what it is because obviously these videos get filmed and then they get posted after a couple days. And so I think it had actually been six weeks since my last filming of a favorites video. So I have a lot of things to talk about um, and a lot of memories to get through as well. So we're just going to do makeup for today. Hope that's fine. And then we're going to do a lifestyle thing later on. I don't know what to title this. I don't know if it's like a seasonal favorites or monthly favorites or whatever because I've done a lot of different things. We're gonna get into it. Um, just mind the noise. I'm sorry it's gonna be noisy. I'm gonna try to cut out as much as I can in editing, um, but this is gonna be a chill video. I'm hot as hell in this room. <laughs> it's not comfy. I, I don't like this, um, but I do wanna get this up because I do want to share with you. I feel like I can't move on in my life without documenting like the favorites from each month. Is that really weird? Is that like a content creator thing? If you make videos, let me know. Okay, I'm wearing a sweater. It was supposed to be in the 70s today and uh, it feels hot. It feels swelt I'm sweltering in here and I don't feel like it's 70 something. So I don't know who lied to me on Apple weather, but I feel personally slighted. Okay, so I have gotten on my soapbox and talked about this many, many times already, but I just want to recap what the month was looking like so you have the context for what kind of makeup I was wearing. So for all summer, I was working on a summer camp. It was a pretty intense camp. I did the curriculum planning and the actual teaching and supervision at the camp, which I feel like all camp counselors do way too much um, and don't get paid nearly enough for the labor they do. So that's kind of just like a general thing, like not to mention education on the whole, but camp is like way worse because kids are like way worse behaved over the summer. Um, anyway, I did that. So when I was getting ready in the morning, I did want to get ready. I did want to put a face on because it, again, helped me put my best foot forward. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel excited. Obviously it's not necessary, but I personally like that little chunk of the day to do that kind of thing. But what I did not like was waking up extra, extra early to put on a face to go sweat it off in 100 plus degree weather. So what I did was I packed a little makeup bag and just kind of threw on some things every day. I think I posted a video for that, so I'll link that up in the cards if you want to see that particular 10 minute look. Um, and then after that, we went to Disney and I packed a little face for that. And then after that, we moved. And so I packed up all my makeup and just kept a tiny little, you know, pouch of stuff. And this is most of that. Um, so even though the month kind of had like many different iterations of product coming in and out of my life and kind of holding on to a couple select products and using them really thoroughly and really completely, I did swap those products out every time there was a new phase. So there are a lot of things to talk about. It's just that I never had access to my full stash the way I do now and the way I did before. So with that out of the way, let's just go in order of what is taking up the most space. So three palettes I've really majorly been relying on and one of them is kind of like a weird caveat and I'll have to show you the ins and outs of that specifically. Um, two that you're not surprised about because I talk about them all the time. They are lasting, lasting favorites on my channel. First one is the So Very Lovely from ColourPop. This came out earlier this year and it's already on sale. So if you haven't been to the ColourPop site in a while, and I don't actually know how long this has been on sale, but last time I checked uh, earlier this week, it was on sale. And I really like this palette. It actually reminds me a lot of the Cinnamon Swirl palette from Too Faced. That palette is really hard to talk out of my mind. Like I really want it. I know it's dumb, um, and actually my Too Faced Gingerbread palette, the shimmers are completely expired and they don't work very well at all. So it's kind of like me telling myself that I can afford and get another one even though I know for a fact that that's not a good idea. I like it. Anyway, <laughs> this I realize now that I'm looking at it is a perfect stand-in for that palette. Uh, and I, again, I've talked your ears off about this palette, why I like it so much, why I find it so versatile. It's because it has that combination of warm and cool as well as a combination of neutral and pop. So you've got a couple of pops, including the coral, the purple, the lilac, depending on your color family, maybe copper is also considered a pop for you. So again, it's that ColourPop formula, it's that ColourPop packaging, everything about it is really travel friendly. I wore it a lot in Disney World, but I also wore it a lot for work because it's really simple. You have a lot of those extra creamy, soft shades that go really well with the finger. You buff it onto the eyelid and then you can kind of blend it out either with a brush or with a clean finger. And I find that those softer shades blend really, really well on their own. And so that was a 
really, really easy pick. Um, I used it throughout the entire month and I liked it throughout the entire month. Similarly, my Too Faced Natural Nudes palette, this one is another classic. I've talked your ears off about this one as well. Specifically, I like this one because it gives you a really contoured look to the eyes without doing much work at all. And I actually feel like Too Faced has a little bit of a crappy reputation in the community because they do so much gimmicky stuff that you kind of forget that sometimes they have really good long-standing favorites, long-standing classics that stand the test of time that honestly hold up with the other stuff that I have in my collection. It holds up with Pat McGrath, it holds up with Natasha Denona. If anything, I actually prefer the mattes here because I don't find that they do that thing where they get darker. So if you prime your eyes with either a skin tone primer, a putty primer, or literally anything, and you use those really, really high-end mattes, those high-end eyeshadows from Pat or from Natasha, sometimes what can happen is you put it on and they're so pigmented and they're so kind of like punchy that when you go to blend, one spot will grab really dark and the other spots will kind of buff out lighter. And not to say that they don't blend because they definitely do blend and it's totally fine. It's not an issue at all. That's not what I'm claiming. And stands of those brands don't come after me because they're my favorite brands too. Um, but I do find that the Too Faced mattes don't do that. So I found it to be particularly helpful, partic particularly helpful, particularly helpful when I didn't have brushes. So when we're talking about on the go and I'm in my classroom, I don't have the brushes on me, but I just want to like throw something on or when I'm traveling and I'm dumb and I forget all my makeup brushes, that is helpful for me as well. So during Disney, during camp, I found this to be particularly helpful in all, like literally in all dimensions, color, flexibility, versatility, ease of application, the shine on the eyes, how long they last. This was just a really good palette and everyone needs a good neutral. I know this was recently on sale in the 21 Days of Beauty. If you got it, congratulations. If you didn't get it, I would highly consider, I mean, I don't want to advertise this. No one needs another neutral palette, but if you are in the market for a neutral palette already, I highly recommend this one. I find it to be one of those lasting gifts that turns out to be really, really handy, really helpful. And honestly, the tones work well for me. So if you are this skin tone, or similar, I would say that you can use all the shades really, really comfortably. None of them look bad. None of them look ashy. I can see darker skin tones finding that it doesn't go dark enough. I find that really only this duo at the very end gives you any kind of depth. But for me, it was definitely a favorite. It worked for me. I was grateful for that. And I found it to be a really good fail safe. Next, I have a kind of complicated palette slash caveat. So I will just say this. The favorite is the Plain Jane palette. So this is the buyable product. The Plain Jane palette from Adept Cosmetics, you guys know how much I like this product already. I've talked about it a lot. Um, it is basically a 12 pan palette of shimmers, duochromes, wet look eyeshadows in a variety of formulas from Adept Cosmetics, which is an indie brand that literally can't keep stock of anything because it is so popular. Like, I mean, everyone knows that this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, the reason why I like this, not just because of the color scheme and the formula and the wearability and all that stuff, which don't get me wrong, I love that about this 100%. But the thing that I like the most about this is that you can take these shadows out and actually rearrange them and use them in different ways. And so I have found that this is the perfect, perfect companion palette for literally anything else in my collection. So what I do is I pop out a couple, build a Z palette, and then if you throw in like three or four duochromes in there with a really, really juicy wet shine, it makes your whole palette turn all the way up to 11. It is chef's kiss, delicious. I love it. I'm actually going to show you right now. Right now I have a really, really light duochrome in my inner corner and it's quite subtle. But what I want to do is take a inner corner brush and just kind of touch that with a mix of lilac and blue. And I just want to show you how freaking bright my inner eye corner looks right now. Right? Isn't that crazy? So this is that color swatched. It is so uber reflective and shiny and it just layers deliciously. So I brought not this exact palette, but I brought a couple of the shades with me to not only Disney World, but also like when I was at work. Um, and again, this is that like flexibility situation. So these are the two palettes that I have. This one is from Amazon. This one's from Ulta. This was a self-made dupe of the Pat McGrath Hutopian Dreams palette. And I don't mean a dupe as in I duped the actual palette because clearly this is not it. And even with the missing shadows, I think I had three. One was lilac, one was pink, and one was like a purple. So, but in terms of color story, this is very much so what I wanted the Hutopian Dreams to look like. I'm not a huge fan of copper. I'm not a huge fan of gold, but I am a huge fan of pinks, purples, blues, periwinkles, even a little bit of like a duochrome green situation. I love like a teal. So I put that together and I used this and I got a ton of compliments on 
my makeup whenever I wore it. So this was really popular throughout the month. And then similarly, using that same palette, I would pull out some of the other shades. So I had, I think, six or seven shades pulled out of that palette during this month. And I filled the rest of this palette up with duochromes. And this was a tonal on tonal inspired palette. I don't think I built it on camera, but I do remember Hannah Louise Poston creating something like this and then learning that I think Chanel's autumn collection was inspired by Tone on Tone. So it was like a perfect seasonal thing. These are, again, really beautiful shades, really beautiful colors, and when you implement just a couple of those fancy duochromes, it really takes everything up to the next level and something basic can turn into something super sophisticated ultra quickly. So um, ultimately, the supporting roles were not super important. That wasn't the favorite. The favorite itself was the formula from Adet Cosmetics, the fact that they are able to create such a beautiful, meticulously crafted product and have it be really flexible and really usable, not just in itself, but also mixed with other things. Hats off to you guys. I think that was an incredible purchase and an incredible like creation. I think it was really, really great. Throughout the whole month, I was using one base combination and that's it. I didn't mess around. I didn't experiment too much. I knew what worked for me and what would carry me through the month and I stuck with it. So for base, what I would do is mix these three products in a, a variety of ways for the whole month. Like literally I didn't do anything else. So I would start my face with some sunscreen that's a non-negotiable and then we would do Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation and CC Cream from It Cosmetics. This is the standard one. It's not the illumination and it's not the matte or whatever. It just comes in the regular tube. Mine is in the shade Light. This is in the shade 1.4N and this is in the shade Fair Glow 901. This is the Lumi Glotion from L'Oreal. So what I would do depending on the coverage day is either one pump of the 1.4N and one pump of the It Cosmetics, or if I wanted something a little bit lighter coverage, I would do half of this, quarter of this, quarter of this. Reason why is because I find that the color on this guy was a little bit too light when I had my summer tan, my summer tan, and the It Cosmetics just never looks good for me. It's really, really orange and really, really dark, which is ridiculous because this is the second lightest shade that they have maybe out of eight shades. I mean, it's not a lot of shades, but it's one of those like supposedly goes from light to dark and is really flexible. But this is a foundation, like it's a pure foundation. I don't think it has any amount of sheerness whatsoever. Actually, I think one pump of this on its own is enough to spread all over the face. And I've got a big head. <laughs> but a lot of skin surface area and honestly, a lot of hyperpigmentation to cover up. So I was really shocked that every time I put this on, the coverage was actually a bit intimidating for me. So I had to mix for tone, but I would also mix for texture. Um, I find that this product has uh, a lot of emollients and spreadability, but it's got thickness and body. This one has thickness and body, but it doesn't have quite the same creaminess. And this is just a lotion and it has a bit of glow in it. So you can kind of adjust thickness, um, opacity, that kind of thing with a combination of all three. I found that they wore beautifully in the disgusting, hot, humid weather. I had like recess duty, pickup duty, drop off duty. So when I was at camp, I was spending half my day outside. And then when I went to Orlando, well, it was hurricane season and I was at Orlando. So we were at Disney World, we were eating, we were running around, uh, we sweat, <laughs> we cried, it was hot, there was a hurricane. It was just like a lot of different things trying my makeup. And when I tell you that everything stayed on, this is a winning combo. So I really, hats off to these guys. I actually <laughs> love this product so much that I bought another one. I went to Sephora and I got another one because it ended up being on sale. And you guys know me, I never, ever, ever buy backups unless it's eyeliner, mascara, that kind of thing. And this kind of foundation in my routine was considered a staple for me. So that's honestly uh, a pretty good pretty good accolade for the kind of product that I was using. Speaking of surviving through a hurricane, um, my Glamnetic lashes. So the lashes I have on my eyes today are from Alter Ego and they are much, much bigger than any lash that I typically wear on a regular basis. When I was at Disney though, I wore these Glamnetic lashes in Cutie. This is from the birthday collection or the virtual collection and they are really beautiful and wispy. I'm gonna try to get it so you don't see the glare. I mean, it's really hard and I didn't want to take any chances. I just went for the Glamnetic liner and this combination got through hurricane. It got through roller coaster. It got through inversions. I did test track. I did uh, space mountain. I did big thunder mountain, like all of it gone through this. And I wore it five days in a row, maybe six days in a row. Like I was there for a whole week and every day we were there from rope drop to fireworks. <laughs> it was a big deal. And I have to say I had no problems. I mean, no lifting, no issues. The inner corner stayed on, you know, when you're flying 65 miles an hour, you'd think that the lashes would pop right off. And they didn't. All six anchors did their jobs beautifully. So I have to say this was a really good purchase. And um, I also thought that with having the liner stick onto the magnet magnetic 
banned that it would get gunky because sometimes that is an issue that you have and I didn't have my q-tips and my whole thing right I traveled light um, but I just ended up using a piece of tissue soaking it with a little bit of micellar water and just kind of like pulling it off with my finger and it came off just fine I mean it is goopy and a little bit uncomfortable because it, it's ferromagnetic so what it ha what it does is it wants to stick back onto the lash band right because it's magnetic um, but if you have the patience to pluck things off it's totally fine and very doable especially if you don't have long nails I had long nails <laughs> I mean, I liked it for the photos, but in terms of taking the glue off the lashes, it was kind of a pain, but they definitely stayed on and they definitely were a favorite. Next, um, the only lip colors I wore were the Revlon Satin Ink Colorstay Satin Ink Lip. I don't even know what they're called, but they're, they're liquid lipsticks. Essentially, to me, they're a glossy liquid lipstick from Revlon. I love these. I talk about these in a review video. I think that should be going up before or after, but if you've been on my channel for the last several months, you will have heard me talk about these. Because I upload so often and because I'm constantly talking about my latest and greatest, I have mentioned these for however long I've had them. In fact, I think I'm actually running out of these because when I pull the tube the like applicator of the tube, I don't see that much product come off on the wand anymore, which is leading to believe that I am almost out, which is surprising because I don't want to repurchase these. Um, but one is a little bit of a brown nude, one is a little bit more of like a rosy, rosy pink. So covers warm and cool looks. I think that they're great because you can put a really sheer layer on and blot it off and it's kind of like a stain, or you can really kind of layer it on and get a nice thick, opaque and darker appearance. It's kind of like paint where the more you put on, the darker and more saturated it looks. So I find these to be incredibly, incredibly versatile, pretty, long-wearing, comfortable, mask-friendly, like literally all of the above. Check, 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 check. Wore these for weeks on end and recently actually picked up one in Black Cherry. So love these, can't recommend them enough. And you've probably heard me talk about them a lot on my channel already, um, but just as a reminder, they were something that I wore all throughout August and late July as well. We're down to the last few. Um, next is the Kosas Bronzer. Okay, this is something that you probably haven't heard me talk about. This is in the shade Medium Golden Bronze. I am not a medium um, bronzer shade. This is a really dark orangey in your face bronzer. However, comma, I loved this as a toasty, toasty blush. This as a blush is beautiful. Um, I didn't pay for this. This was a gift from someone got it at work gratis and then gave it to someone else who doesn't wear makeup who gave it to me. Um, so I don't know if this is worth, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's probably like $40 at Sephora. I probably wouldn't pay $40 for this just personally speaking because I don't really like really warm bronzer, but I have to say as a blush, it is, it is stunning. It is beautiful. It has a little bit of that pearlized sheen. I think you can probably tell from the packaging itself. It has that like marble baked finish. Um, and the tone is very orange, but if you're on vacation already and you want to look even glowier and even orangier, this is the pal for you. I know their cloud powder cloud set is incredibly popular because it's so finely milled and so smooth and I think they probably have the same technology. I think it was made in the same factory or at least made with the same producers because it has that same really, really silky, ultra blendable, kind of like layerable final product, right? Like the actual product itself is finely milled, really smooth, really creamy, and you can layer it in a way that works for your skin. So I like that bronzer a ton. Another thing that I really could not get enough of is the Dior Backstage Highlighter. So this is the highlighter in 004 Rose Gold. I purchased it off a lovely subscriber who said that she wasn't using hers very much and um, I was pining after this but it was long discontinued after the fact. So I'm not going to pine too much about this because I know it's not accessible and I actually think maybe Dior Backstage got rid of the other ones as well. I'm not too sure but I heard somewhere that they are discontinued which is tragic because these are ultra ultra finely milled. I know they are are they Morgan Turner's favorite highlighter formula of all time? I'm pretty sure I've heard someone say that this is their favorite highlighter formula of all time, and I can see why. It's a baked gelée formula, so um, the actual surface is powdery to the touch, but not um, not to the point where you can like continue to pick up product and product. You can't like continue to scrape off product off the top. It just kind of gives you a thin, silky layer, and then does magic on the skin. I don't know how to describe it, uh, but it's so versatile. So first of all, you have four beautiful tones. And then on top of that, you can use it on top of your skin or underneath your skin. So how I would use this in Disney World especially is I would put on my SPF, then use a sponge, put this all over the SPF as a way to set it. So as a way to kind of lock in that SPF and also as a way to soak in some of the oils. I know that you have to wait, so I waited like 10 minutes for the SPF to sink in. And then after that, I wanted to make sure that my face was glowy and dewy, right? But I didn't want to use a glowy or dewy product because that may break down the SPF or whatever. I didn't want to like risk it. By using a powder product, you get all of the glow of a lotion without any of the fuss of having the oils break through your skin. 
And also because this is so finely milled, it did accentuate my glowiness, but it didn't make my pores look abysmal at all. And then, you know, you would do like a reverse foundation, just put foundation on top, and then you have some of that glow peek through, but it's not from greasiness, it's from powder. So I loved, love, love this product. And of course, I topped it off with a little fan brush or whatever, tapped it on top, and it was totally fine. I also like how all four shades can be mixed, and so that's pretty much what I did all the time. And now, you can't even see the imprinting on this because I've used it so, so, so much. Last but not least, I cannot not mention the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara because it is what I used every day. I honestly, um, I don't think I would have any respect for my natural lashes if I'd never tried this. I mean, this is a life-altering mascara. Problem is, I hate the packaging. Like, it is really annoying. Like, what is this weird... Uh, honestly, it looks like a calculus equation. I hate it. I, I don't like it. I don't like this shape. It reminds me of math. It makes me sad. Um, but I do really like the formula and I like the wand. I like how easy and straightforward it is to use. I like how quick the results are to show on your eyes. So when you're on vacation, when you're at work, you don't want to be building your mascara for longer than like 10 seconds. I don't want to be doing my mascara for longer than 10 seconds. I want to open my eyes, take out the mascara wand, coat my lashes twice and call it a day, right? I don't, I don't need it to be rocket science. I don't need it to be like blending my eyeshadow, okay? Um, this does that for you and it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge. You can cry, again, you can sit through a hurricane, nothing will budge, but it comes off perfectly with just a simple micellar water. It is stunning. It is beautiful. I don't know how to praise this mascara enough. I mean, I've reviewed it, I've featured it, I've talked about it, I've decluttered all other mascaras, so you know for a fact that this is the one for me. It's just that I had to mention it again because I was using it for like seven weeks straight and I don't regret it at all. Every day when I get ready, I'm still excited to use my It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. It's honestly a little bit stupid how excited and how much I love this thing, um, but it is what it is and I had to tell you, okay? So that is everything. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully I was animated enough to keep you going. I miss you guys. I love talking favorites. I love talking makeup, geeking out, um, and then we'll come back with a little bit of lifestyle stuff because I have a lot of things to talk about in that realm as well. Uh, hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you were entertained. I love you so much and I will see you again very soon. Bye